Swimming Pool International, the Swimming Pool Podcast. A warm welcome to our International Swimming Pool Podcast. We talk about dream pools around the world. In front of me sits Angela, Angela Hermann. International Sales Man Manager at Banker Manufacturing in Germany. And in front of me sits Michael Fischer, Export Manager at Fluvo Schmalenberger from Tübingen in Germany. Hi, Michael. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty well. Good, it's good, good. It's an exciting time now. Yes, yes, yes. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> yes, yes. Today we are actually at the first day uh, of the Piscine in Lyon, the 27th edition. Wow, can you believe that? 27th yes it's no and, and it's already every two years it's yes. like oh my god when did they start yeah, so it's like more than 50 years ago it started in the late 70s wow that's impressive i didn't know that no and it's it's the biggest fair for pools and spas in the world with visitors visitors from all around and of course we are very excited to meet international customers friends and partners and to to see finally have a show again and here we are in Lyon in kind of a, a little bit in the center let's say of France I hope I say it correctly and yes it's a very very nice city it has a beautiful city center very old actually I read that Lyon is over 2,000 years old and really? it's world heritage wow. and of course it's famous for food yes it's so famous for French food and there I have a little story. I remember when I came driving to towards Lyon and I said, oh my, yeah, I studied in Dijon when I was younger. Okay. And I had this friend and he always bring me some pastry from Lyon. Okay. So it's very famous here. Um, yeah, French food from, from this area is famous even in France. So I think we have some time to enjoy that too. Okay, well... I un also understood there's a, li a nice bakery inside. <laughs> Maybe we can try a pastry <laughs> next later on. Yeah, um, let's start with this, no? <laughs> and uh, what also is so exciting, the show uh, due to COVID uh, didn't take place in 2020. So it's four years now. It has been four years. So I'm really, really eager to, uh, to meet our customers again and to see new products. Yeah. And I was, I had the chance to walk around yesterday where they were building already some stands. And I thought this time really I see a lot of um, exhibitors. Yeah. And I think it will be very seriously interesting what new products are out in the swimming pool and wellness industry. Yes. And tell us a bit, uh, Angela, why are we doing this podcast? We are doing that because, as you mentioned, it's about the dream pool. We want to inform our listeners to, yes, what is new in the market? What can you do with the pool? What types of pools are out there? We will talk about water treatment, about a big topic here in Europe at the moment, about energy saving, about water features, because the pool, you can do so much more nowadays. It's not like maybe 30 years ago when you really went into a pool to swim and do exercise nowadays it's also a, yeah a place to leisure to sit around to and relax to have a lot of yes, attractions yes. Um, uh, so and so yeah we want to inform and uh, also let people know that there is a difference uh, in the markets uh, in europe it's all about energy saving currently while in india it's maybe more about wellness so there's so much topics that we can cover uh, over time and exactly. uh, I would say have a very good show and uh, let's see who we can meet today. Yeah, and we are here, you don't see it, but we are seriously here sitting at the entrance. So, yeah, it's really time to walk in and talk to people, talk to yes. partners, to other industries who produce or, um, or sell products for the pool. And yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's go. Yes, hello. We're still here in Lyon and we have, we're have we super excited because it's our first interview partner we really have and we do, um, it's Korchan here. Welcome. And he's from Suncourt. We, she actually has those kind of projects, what we are talking about, Dream Pool. And he has a company which is situated in Turkey as well as in Germany. And yes, 
Uh, I want to hear something. I'm very excited to, to listen to what you have to tell us. Yes, yeah, so although we know uh, you, Korchan, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Thank you very much. I'm also very uh, happy to be a part of this podcast. Um, as you both know, our company uh, is a 40-year-old company, a family company from Turkey, originated from Turkey, Istanbul. We have subsidiaries in uh, Istanbul, in Bodrum, uh, Turkey, and also in Germany, in Dortmund. Um, so we employ uh, about 100 uh, people uh, all around Europe, and we are doing um, from private pools to hotel projects and to uh, public pools um, a lot of uh, square meters uh, per year. So we are happy to be a part of this, and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, v very... Uh very interesting. So you started uh, I in Germany how, ma how long ago? In Germany we started three years ago and we uh, have already a lot of projects in Germany. In, in Germany the pool market is uh, growing a lot uh, faster uh, and uh, so we are very happy with our investment in Ger Germany and we hope to do more of course in the following years. Okay. And wha and, and uh, yeah, well, you can ask uh, have and a I question. And I think I just thought about Turkey and I thought about this dream destination. No, you have such a beautiful landscape and you have the sea. You, na you must have amazing projects. Uh, actually, yes, uh, we have a lot of projects in Turkey and we have a lot of projects with, uh, with branded projects uh, that we call them. Uh, we made, uh, with cooperation of German companies, we made this uh, Ritz-Carlton Residences Bodrum project. Uh, it finished in 2020. It brought with 75 villas, and 75 villas had all uh, both, uh, all had pools. And uh, now we are doing the Ritz-Carlton Istanbul project. That's a different investor, but the same brand. And the Ritz-Carlton Istanbul has uh, a very, it's a big skyscraper, so to say, and it has uh, penthouse pools, it has indoor pool, outdoor pool, it's spa area, and it's a very fascinating project, as to say. I can, I well. can imagine. And what do you love so much about this job? Um, uh, actually, I can say what I love about my job is uh, I'm also a civil engineer, so I'm in, in construction business. Uh, what I can say the most I like in my project in our job is uh, we can finish a very beautiful project in a couple of months. So we are satisfied in a couple of months and we can see the end of our project and we can see the end result and that's uh, very, very uh, satisfying for yes, us. Yes, instead of years and years. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. for normal, for normal civil engineer or an engineer or, or an architect, you have to wait two or three years until you see the result of your project. But in swimming pool business or in spa business, you can see in a couple of months what you have done, what you have accomplished. Uh, I think it's the best of our uh, business, best part of our business. Yes, uh, just one question when you were while you were talking about this came to my mind and I, I thought what uh, is actually special in the Turkish market and maybe different from the German market in, in terms of pools and wellness industry? Uh, that's a very good question actually. Uh, I th I s we are uh, aware of both markets. We work in both markets in Germany, in Europe and in Turkey. So uh, there's a ac actually there's a very huge and uh, important difference between two markets. In Turkey, if a family, if uh, a customer can achieve to uh, have a pool, uh, he has a less awareness of money, a less awareness of costs. In Turkey, we have, if I have to have a pool, I have to have the best. So we have always concrete pools with tiles, with the best tiles, and infinity pools with the best controllers, with the best filtration systems. But in Germany, it means I can have a pool and that's it. So I think uh, the way to look at the luxury uh, is different in both markets because uh, Turkey is a Mediterranean country, of course, and Germany is a middle European company. And I think uh, the, the country, and so uh, we have uh, these differences. I, th I think it's an di important difference. If you achieve a luxury market in Turkey, you are more successful than you can be in uh, Europe. I think that's very interesting for us as international salespeople, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And how do you see the future of the pool world? 
I think the pool world will uh, develop further. Uh, the energy crisis that we are uh, right now, we're living right now, it's of course a problem, but I think it will be, we will have better solutions. We have the pool covers, we have the better insulations, we have the uh, more um, effective pumps, more effective uh, uh, controllers. So I think we will uh, develop ourselves better in this area to solve the energy crisis and uh, everybody is loving their homes and I, I think the private pool business is going to develop um, much more further. So you're actually quite positive? I'm positive. Okay, yes. great. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, this uh, in small interview and uh, appreciate your time and it was very uh, interesting what you had to say and uh, yeah, thank you very much. I thank you and I appreciate it also. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Hi, Yuri. Yuri Katz from Mitronics here in Lyon at the biggest show world for swimming pools and wellness in the world. It is. We are very excited to have you here on our table. Thank you. And like to ask you some questions. Perfect. Yes, How are you? after so many years, it's so exciting to be here again. And good to see you, Yuri. Yeah, you can hear the noise at the background. So many people running around after four years. It's amazing to meet again with people, to see what's new in the market. It's really an event and we are very happy to be here as well. Okay, good so... You said what is new in the market. Yeah. Let us know something, what yeah. you do and you what is new. You know, Metronics as usual is at the edge of the technology. We are thinking of the future and we are introducing now a very nice robot called the Liberty. Basically, it's following the trends of other tools and so, which is a battery-driven robot with very, very nice features I would like to tell you about. And is it all available already or will it be for next season? We, uh, we are now in the stage where we are testing the product. We are at the final stage. We are very happy with the results. The product will be available for the market starting January 2023. And it will be a product uh, suitable. Of course, it's on the Dolphin platform that everybody knows. It's a very nice robot with a running time of one and a half hours, suitable for pools up to 10 meters. It has inductive charging, which is a very nice feature, not exposing it or the contacts to erosion and things like that. It has very nice LED indicators in the front showing the end customer exactly what he wants to know, how long the battery lasts, activating is on off, very, very easy, scrubs and collect the dirt like all the dolphins are doing. And it's a very nice unit and it looks really sexy. And it's cableless. It's cableless, exactly. So, As I said, instead of a cable, we have an inductive charging the charging takes about four hours and the robot is running for one and a half hours and does a beautiful job and we are so happy and so and I, I assume the end customer will also be excited and happy with the result of this nice product. Oh great and it will be available for Europe as well as US? We are uh, allowing it and in entering into all markets with the product. We are doing a soft launch what we call because the end customer is an unknown factor for us. You know, the customer are used to a cable. They are used to have the robot for several weeks sometimes in the pool. Here we are talking about a very, very different technology. And it will be a very interesting uh, feedback from the customer how they like to have a robot. Not only a drilling machine or a handy or a car but a water robot that runs around and cleans the pool. And it w all works on an app, no? You can... The, this is a topic which for now is uh, not fully integrated because you know that the robot is submerging underwater. It doesn't have any communication. So the app operates when the robot is outside. You can configure the robot. Once it's in the water, there is no communication and the robot is independent. But here you have the very advanced scanning system of Matronics that makes sure that the robot covers the whole pool, regardless what shape or surface it has. 
And I know that was for me super exciting. You have a little tool that the yes. robot is even listening like a little bell. I was yes. like, wow. <laughs> this is a very nice tool. It's a clicker. Basically, the robot stops at the wall after one and a half hour scanning. So you have wow. two options. Either you can start fishing the robot out of the water or you click with the clicker. We have a microphone integrated into the robot. It recognizes the voice and it climbs to the waterline and waits patiently for you to take it out of the water. Wow. Pretty amazing. Yes, well. We are very far we humans already, no? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let's see where it develops, you yeah, know. Yeah, this is what I want to ask you. Do you have any ideas what will be a, what is the future? You know, the industry is uh, considered to be a very uh, non-conformative. It's a very slow moving industry. However, in the last few years, we see dramatic changes in controlling in uh, water quality. And I assume robots as well will have in the future ability to clean itself and things like that. But you know, we will not reveal too much no. to the competition, but we are working on uh, independent robots that will be totally independent. And you will only need to take it out here and there to see that the robot is functioning well. Great. The poor, the poor, poor boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing to do. No, we love them as well. No, okay. no, they are doing a marvelous job. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank so you much. very much, and uh, for your time. We know that you're very busy at this show. And thank you. Uh, have a good. Always. Uh, have a good week. Uh, the rest of the week, and uh, thanks again. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Perfect. Bye. Hi, Angela. In front of me actually sits Dominic Raff, the owner and CEO of Dryden Aqua. And we talk about water treatment today. And I have to say, I always love, <laughs> and I know we talked about it before, but I have to mention it, I always love the story about the dolphins. Maybe we can start a bit from the beginning and then we really talk about water treatment and also what is really entering at the time now is water saving. Okay, perfect, yeah, uh, the dolphin story. Well, this is uh, the base where AFM started, you know, my friend and partner, Dr. Howard Dryden, he invented uh, this uh, famous uh, filter media AFM, activated filter media, which is done out of a recycling glass and a very sophisticated process, washed, cleaned, whatever, and then activated. And uh, this was also was the question, how did he get to this? And it was about the dolphins. Uh, uh, Dr. Howard Dryden, he's a marine biologist, and uh, he did uh, treatment systems for dolphinariums. And in dolphinariums, uh, most often these dolphins live in chlorinated uh, systems. And uh, well, the, the lifetime of uh, dolphins in chlorinated systems is um, sure. 10, 20 years. It's not sure, but it's 10, 20 years. And they are dying from, from lung diseases, coming from trichloramine, coming from trilomethanes, such as chloroform. And his mission was to, to do these systems to minimize these uh, disinfection byproducts so the dolphin gets uh, f up to 40, 50 years like they do in the oceans. So this was his base, and this is where he started. So uh, where uh, Dryden Aqua had his roots. And later on, he moved to the pool industry, actually by me. We met uh, each other by chance, and I tried it out in my pool. I was blown away, you know, about performance, you know, the day after uh, where I had it in my, my pool. The, the water looked completely different. I could reduce the oxidation. I used at that time with peroxide, with Perosoft, by uh, 50%. And this is where I, I, I got into this, where I got this, this Dryden virus. And, um, well, I tried it in my pool and then uh, I went to, to, to Scotland and I met Howard. He looked like an old Viking, you know, with long hair, such <laughs> a really <laughs> old yes, hippie. Yes. I, I, I was 25 years already in, in the pool water treatment, um, but I learned in one day from Howard more than I learned in 25 years. Right. And the unique thing was this biological approach, you know, uh, where he said, Dominic, we have to understand how nature works. You know, we have to, to, to work not against nature, but with nature. 
So what we should do, you know, instead of uh, uh, let bacteria grow in high population and then try to solve the problem with high dose of chlorine or any other oxidants, let's prevent the growth. And that's why we need a bioresistant filter media. And that's why we have to remove by good, uh, by good filtration, maybe improve by coagulation flocculation with our APF, all the nutrients which are in the water. Because if there is uh, no nutrients in the water, there is no growth. And if the bacteria do not have a surface to grow on it, they cannot grow. So you don't get into problem. And this, this biological approach was really unique. It still is unique. He was the first biologist in, in our industry. And yeah, this was this virus which I got on day number one when I met him and I never, I never got away from it. Maybe you can say something, what is then, a lot of people use sand, right, for filtration. But uh, what makes AFM <coughs> so different? Yeah, um, we, <laughs> uh, there are uh, less and less people who have sand, more and more people are moving now to AFM. I mean, it, it, what, what makes a difference? There are three things. AFM filters a lot better than sand. It's roughly twice as good as sand if we're talking about small particle. I mean, uh, good sand filters down to 20 micron, 30 micron, 50 micron. AFM comes to one micron. So it's the filtration performance. But I guess even more important is uh, the bioresistance. So you don't have bacterial, uh, bacterial growth of bacteria. You don't have clumping, you don't have channeling, so the performance stays for years as good ah, as it is the first okay. day. You don't have all the, the pathogens which are growing in biofilm. If you don't have bacteria, you don't have biofilm. That's why you don't have all these pathogens like Legionellas and Pseudomonas and all this. But nowadays with the energy crisis, the main factor that moves in is backwash efficiency. Ah, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, we're we short in, in, in water and we're short in energy. Exactly. So if the people can save up to 50% of their backwash water because it's easily, it's more easy to backwash, you can backwash uh, the media uh, shorter, I mean yes. long enough, but shorter, and we measure this with turbidity meter in the backwash line, that makes a huge difference yes. in, in residential pools and even more important in commercial pools because, yes. yeah, Cubic meters for water is what today in, in Germany, I, I would say it's roughly two, three, five euros. And to heat it up, you know, when we had energy prices, which were, I don't know, five cents per kilowatt, that was an easy one. But now we are talking about 25, 250. So yeah, that's that becomes, at the moment, it's the main, main issue, backwash efficiency. Yes, and uh, if you then put in uh, electricity into account as well, the pumps will be running shorter, right? Uh, not short. I, that I think that's a little bit another story, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm fully uh, uh, for that we we filter 24 hours, that we use frequency inverters, uh, on uh, top variable of the speed pumps. Yeah, I'm 200% yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm and it controls this also with a flow meter. Yeah. Uh, that makes a huge difference. And we also need, you know, we, we, we want to profit by this low filtration velocity. But with the variable speed pump, we also will have the benefit to backwash the filters fast enough. That's what I mean, yeah. And um, also, uh, we tested not just AFM, I mean uh, any other media. And for all the media, people always think the, l the l slower you're backwashing, the less battery you consume. Yeah. It's not true. Okay. It's completely the opposite. You know, if you have a high backwash velocity, you have a much more efficient backwash, then you can make it a lot shorter. To give you an example, if you backwash a filter at 30 meters per hour, you need six minutes. Yes. If you backwash it with 60 meters per hour, you can do it in two minutes. Not in three, but in two. Right. And this is the, the savings. And this is not just for AFM, this is for any other media. It's just AFM is at least by a factor of uh, 1.5 to 2, the most efficient in backwash efficiency. Well, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's 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 fascinating, uh, and the the fact that it started with 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 dolphins, with animals, and then it moved into pools, and and now from it started private pools and moves to public pools, as I understand, it's quite fascinating. And uh, like you said, in this time of you know uh, the, the 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 crisis is in energy, the water pollution, everything on top of that is it's it's fascinating. So. 
I mean, quite logic, I would say, go to AFM. Uh, that's, uh, for me, the number one. No, but for, for a pool owner, I think the first thing you should do, you should go for a variable speed pump, 24-hour yes. filtration, use a flow meter, uh, run it uh, at a low velocity for majority of, of the day if you're not using the pool. Uh, have enough of power to backwash the filter properly, fast and short. Um, I think that's that's uh, the key one. And then the next step is uh, go for smart systems. And we just launched now in the Dryden family a new product called Space, uh, which is an AI, artificial intelligence based uh, pool management system, which will really um, improve all these processes automatically with artificial intelligence where you will get another big savings in water and with that in energy and make just your pool um, yeah, just fun. And with AI you mean it's self-learning? It will adjust it according to the circumstances? Yes. Okay, yes. well it that's really unique. Yeah, that's really unique. We don't have AI so far in the pool industry. Right. Um, and it will make the system better and better. And I and I know this is one feature I <laughs> especially like. It's like, uh, you know, when it's raining, you can see the forecast, no? And then you can already decide, okay, well, then it's the time to make the backwash. No, you are not deciding it. It's the, the AI who will yeah, do this decision for you. Yeah. Already, but super smart. And then again, you save water. Yeah. Right? Yeah, th that's uh, uh, depending, of course, on the season, that might be quite a massive saving. Yes. Uh, but it's also, uh, you know, you don't have to calibrate anymore the probes during the season. It will uh, help you to detect if you have uh, a leakage in your system. It will, it tries to analyze the problem before you have the problem and right. will let you know. And that's, uh, that's quite fascinating. You know, AI, I'm always a little bit on, on two sides. On the one side, I think, well, that's a little bit this big broader thing, you know, 1984. On the other, AI really can make your life a lot easier. You see this with Tesla. It's a little bit the Tesla of, uh, of uh, pool control. So yeah, we are very much looking forward. It will come to the market from January on, and uh, we believe it will, be, it will be the next step. And that will be available both for public and for uh, private pools, or will it, is it? Yep, it will be for both. We will start and focus on the the private pools, but it will be for both. Right. Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, very exciting news to look forward to. And uh, yes, thanks a lot. My Thank pleasure. You, thanks for having me here. Yes, hello. Good morning. Here we are again, and we sit in front of Jiri from Niveco. And we, yeah, we are, it's the last day of the fair and uh, we came to your booth. First of all, what I noticed was that you have even real grass on your booth, which you told me you have to water every day. But not we are not here for the grass, no, you are a famous producer of pools. And yeah, we would like to know more about it, what kinds of pools you have and uh, yeah, what is good to know for the end customer. Yeah, good morning everybody from Lyon, France. Yes, uh, Niveco is a custom-built monopools producer and we do our job for more than 30 years and our company is well known in whole Europe because uh, we provide our clients with a full range of products. Uh, first of all, we have uh, skimmer and also uh, overflow solutions. Uh, in the overflow segment, we are quite unique because we have, because we have five different models and uh, we can customize our product and that's our our uh, strength, strength yes and on the market i would say and in this we are unique right right and uh, so now looking back at the fair this week uh, what is your feeling uh, uh, regarding the future regarding 2023 uh, my feeling is positive, I would say. Uh, we met a lot of people here, our existing clients, uh, new, uh, new uh, companies and, and uh, new people who could, who could maybe uh, become our partners. And the feeling in the branch, uh, in, in the industry is 
Not so bad, because everyone knows that uh, after two years of COVID time, which boosted up uh, the whole industry, it will come down. And it's good for the industry and it's good for all of us. But we still believe that uh, we can take the time uh, to improve everything in the company, to be ready for the next season and to provide our clients with high standards. So, Thierry, so you just mentioned you customized your pools, right? Mm -hmm. So the customer can really say, ah, I want to have this kind of shape, this size, and you will do it. Is that right? Yes, exactly. That's how we work. So the client uh, will come to us or to our partner with his specific wish and we fulfill this wish if it's technically possible, of course. Okay, uh, how many pools do you do? Uh, in a year we produce about thousand pools. That's our recent capacity we have. Okay, do you have any plans for the future? Like uh, different, I don't know, some super special, super different Or uh, even, even different what colors. What is the uh, development? Uh, we have a lot of news for next season, but at the moment I cannot tell you more details because uh, we are preparing a, a partner evening uh, for December for all of our partners from all of Europe and uh, we will we will provide them with this news at this time so at this moment i can't tell you more details about it and the, uh, the end customer as you said you you customize um they already get the equipment with it or how does it work uh, the end client gets always the full package. It means the pool is full equipped with all installations which is necessary uh, to have it in the pool. It means lights and, and inlets and counter currents and whatever. And that's uh, our strength that we provide our clients with full installations uh, which comes from the factory. So we don't need to install them on site or our partner doesn't need to do it on site. So that's very practical for them, no? Yeah, of course, <laughs> of yes. course. Yeah. It ensures a quick installation. And do you, um, looking back, see, uh, what, are your, what do you consider the highlights of this exhibition? Not uh, specifically in Niveco, but in general, have you seen something really special? Uh, I consider this uh, trade fair as the best in, in Europe because it's uh, very large, very big and uh, it's very professional. You can see how many visitors uh, yes. here are and what's the quality of, of, of uh, exhibitors. Yes. So from yes. this point of view I have a very good feeling about it. Uh, and I, and I, would I, I would say it's not the biggest in Europe it's the biggest in the world yes for sure it is sure. by far I uh, and I've seen this also again this time it's by far the best exactly. in, uh, compared to others if you only have to pick one exhibition I would pick this one yes for <laughs> sure <laughs> especially if you come from far no and you really have to make a plan uh, or something no yes yes uh, well, yes, I would say okay. thank you very much thank for your you time, much, and yes. uh, pleasure. Thank you. we will um, meet again somewhere. And Angela, you had another question? No, I just say no question. It's just thank you. It was very interesting, I think, for the end customer. And I just want to say thank you, Michael. We had such a great time here at the fair, no? And as you has mentioned, as Jiri also has mentioned, this is an amazing fair. No, we you meet fr people from all over the world. Yes, it was crowded. We had super good customers, and we can only say to to swimming pool builders or wholesalers, come to Lyon. I mean, we don't work here, but I really yes. have to say so because it yes, was yeah. really yeah. successful, and it's a lot of fun as well. Yes. You meet people in the industry which you haven't seen for a long time. And yeah, yes, I and uh, from my side, of course, Angela, thank you also. It was uh, it was really, uh, uh, really nice to work with you. And we will be back with other podcasts in the future. And uh, yes, thanks a lot. And uh, you have a si safe uh, trip home tomorrow, uh, Yiri. And thank you uh, very much for the invitation. And uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. 
You can write us with any comments or questions at mail at swimmingpool-podcast.com. And just a little um, looking forward in the future about our next episode. We'll be in France again, in the capital, and we're going to talk to a very, very big player of the industry, which we are very looking forward to. Yes. And, well, it was so great. It was such an exciting exhibition. Um, looking forward in two years to come again to Lyon. And, yeah, I'm just saying thank you, danke, gracias, merci. Spasiva, xie xie. Thank you all. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye. This episode of the Swimming Pool International podcast is also supported by our media partner, Eurospa Pool News, the international media of pool and spa industry. Thank you very much for this support.